You know, like it, it, it's just, it is that comfort zone. You, you really you genuinely feel like I can win any game. Yeah. I will say reflecting on the event, um, the Maui's fish hooks were pretty terrible up until they weren't. And then they were the best card in my deck. There's some layer to saying that just by having a different type of card in your deck, it forces your opponent to make different decisions. That's absolutely true. Uh, and, and, the pixel born is is absolutely incredible for that because like the you, you know you queue into people at your skill level and as you progress you queue into better you know there, there's definitely something about going with what you know you know and I, I think that that's uh that would be like the go home takeaway from that statement so ruby amethyst is a great choice for set champs because it has game against everything hi everybody welcome back to the forbidden mountain today we have dave attack for two solberg joining us how are you this evening sir I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, obviously we've gotten to know each other pretty well over the last few months, but you know, this is a good opportunity. You're coming off a, a very successful weekend, um, you know, finishing third place overall, which we had a joke about how you had to play for third place and it wasn't just like a top four, but you got there, right? You got there. I did get there uh, <laughs> in a bad matchup on the draw too. So I'm yeah. kind of hey, we take those, right? We take those. Yeah, we do. Uh... <laughs> So uh, let's talk about the experience of the tournament a little bit here. You know, um, largest Pixelborn tournament to date, right? I mean, it was gigantic. Uh, so... and, and my first Pixelborn tournament. Okay, um, okay, yeah. I played a bunch in paper, but it was my first time sitting down. Uh, and playing it like for like that long on a oh. on like in a tournament setting because I mean, you know, you're you've been on the leaderboards for ever, yeah. so. <laughs> But yeah, so talk to me about the talk me through the tournament. You know, is there anything that you liked about it, disliked about it? You know, how did the system run? Was everything went well? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the the tournament was super fluid and uh, fast paced, which I really liked. I actually think that's a benefit of the best of two format. Yeah. Is the forty minute rounds like it's over? It's really snappy. Each round's less than an hour. Uh, so for a nine round tournament, I think we kind of breezed through it. I think it was like eight hours total. Yeah, it was quick. Uh, it felt really fast. And I also it was my first time using uh, the Lorcana oh. Play Network. Is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's the Lorcana Play Network. Yeah, I thought that was pretty seamless too. The way it like automatically matches you and puts you in the chat with your opponent, so you can say like I'm ready. And it, it, it like automatically gives you the code, right? Yeah, and it gives you a yeah. code to use in Pixelborn. Uh, so all of that I felt was uh, really good. Um, you know, like being stuck in your basement could be a disaster for nine hours. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, it was pretty smooth. And um, a lot of my rounds were over pretty quick. So like I got to go upstairs and catch breaks in between. Uh, and I thought it was a really good event. I thought it was run pretty smoothly. Uh, the judges were excellent. Uh, I did have a judge call and they were pretty quick to respond uh, and help with that. So all in all, it was a great experience for me. And it wasn't just because I had a successful week weekend. I also right. just thought it was a good time. Okay, that's good. It's good to hear, you know, because it's, it's something that has uh, realistically been growing and growing ever since January now. So yes. um, to see how it's grown, to see uh, the LPN website really take feedback well, kind of adapt well, uh, to see the pack, you know, just grow, take feedback, grow as well. So it's been nice to, to see it slightly increase. You know, uh, I think the last one had just under 300 players. This one came at, you know, 367 players so it we'll see you know the, it has a lot of potential to continue to grow yeah so I, I presume if, if the prize pools also keep growing that the events will keep growing uh, <laughs> it's probably a good bet <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see we'll no see. It, it, that's probably a pretty good bet <laughs> yeah. yeah all right so uh you are without a doubt a ruby amethyst inficionado uh is that a fair statement for me to say uh I have played it more than any other deck. I think if uh, I remember correctly, you had told me the other day, or you told the team the other day, that you don't have any other cards in sleeves. <laughs> that is true. So some people were in the team were asking about in paper what we were going to play for set championships. And uh, <laughs> I said, I'm going to play a red purple because that's the only sleeve deck I have. And I'm not, it's they a, are double sleeve too. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not swapping them all out. Yeah, um, I get it. I, I, totally, I totally respect you know, that. <laughs> So let's talk about your deck list from this past weekend. What, uh, you know, what, what did you, through the course of the day, you know, uh, nine round tournament, uh, did you get O2 would at all? I did one time to Purple Steel. Okay, so uh, what, it was was it the uh, the aggro version? 
It was the version that made top 16, and they were two very uncompetitive games. Uh, he, okay. he just blew me out uh, yeah. both games. Um, uh, so aside from that, what? how many draws did you end up having? Uh, five wins, one loss, three draws was my okay. first day. So what were your draws against? Uh, Amber Steele mm-hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. And Green Steel once were my three draws. Okay. So how do you feel about the um the deck in the two game format? You know, this we you know, this is your version of this list. Uh it, for anyone that doesn't know, Dave top four the five K in Philly a few weeks back from Star City Games as well, with something similar. There's definitely some new flavor to this, but all in all, you know, remotely close to the same type of list, right? Yeah, actually, I, I would say that this list is basically four cards off of stock, what most people would call stock these days. Okay. Uh, so if you take the scar and make it a be prepared, yep. uh, you get rid of the fish hooks and one Maleficent three drop and you turn them into three minis. Sure. I would say that's pretty close to stock. Okay. Um, but I would say leading up to the weekend, uh, our teammate George was um, kind of the one pioneering this type of uh this type of deck specifically not having the minis Mm -hmm. uh and then i was working with melissa a little bit on the final few cards um i was pretty convinced i wanted to be off of uh the full set of be prepared Mm -hmm. i expected green steel to be rather popular uh and one of the ways you can lose that matchup is if their ursula two drops actually hit a song in your hand so you just don't want to have them even like just any song realistically like, even yeah, when yeah. and it doesn't really matter what it is whether it's be prepared that you intend to cast anyway you just don't want to end up with two because yeah. if you're on the draw you can't get rid of them fast enough for like the ursula to take one uh so i knew i wanted to go less i actually wanted to go down to only two be prepared and i wanted to play uh full play sets of tremaine and medusa Love instead it. and so then i would have uh play sets of um of rabbit uh medusa Tremaine as my, and then two Pinocchios and two Be Prepared as my 16 uninkables. Uh, Melissa was the one that said that might be a little crazy and I, I needed to tone it back. I don't think um, so. So we, she, she should go all in. <laughs> yeah, she convinced me to maybe go back to three. Yeah. Uh, and then um, somebody that she knew had tried one scar in place. Uh, and that was a completely untested change on my part, but it resonated with me because it would be good. It's still a board wipe against Green Steel um and it can't get hit by the ursulas and also like in the red blue matchup or even in the mirror one of the ways you can lose is if you get jammed up on too many be prepareds in your hand yeah uh, so like you draw multiple cards but they're all be prepared and you can't end up doing anything and you sort of fall behind when you had in, when you had a lead and scar is like a be prepared in that matchup that can also be played in quest for two um so i liked it um and then all three of us were pretty convinced that uh, Surfer Mini wasn't the right answer, and we wanted to be on the Maleficent train. Um, we were kind of recognized that Surfer Mini was growing in popularity, so that's why we went back to the fish hooks. Yeah. Uh, so if you go back a, a month to SCG Philly, uh, no red purple players are playing any minis, and two fish hooks were stock. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what I went back to. Yeah. Um, and like I said, so we're basically four cards off the stock list mm-hmm. uh, and made it better against Green Steel. Um, and and red blue in my opinion, which was which were what I thought was going to be the two most popular decks. Right. Um, turns out red purple was the most popular deck. Yeah. Uh, by a lot. And, yeah. Um, I will say that if uh, I did play into the mirror, I probably would have felt behind because I didn't have any surfer minis and I didn't have any spell books. Mm-hmm. Um, but in uh, nine rounds plus uh, the four on Sunday, I never played against red purple. So. Yeah. I died. so I was I was right and I was wrong. I was I was right because I never played it, but I was wrong because it was very popular. I just never yeah, saw it. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, it. I think when really when I saw those stats, I was I was kind of blown away because I really did feel that this was gonna be a weekend where there was a good potential chance that it was a fall off. And in success rate it fell off uh pretty large. I mean, you know, you were two of or one of two that were of the 85 registered list that were able to make top 16. I believe the other Ruby Amethyst player lost in top 16. So you were able to, you know, you, you were the best Ruby Amethyst of the 85 registered players that day. Um, And I, I felt, you know, I really did feel, felt good about it. I I agree with you guys that it, it felt like a good weekend to take the breaks off of the good mirror cards to make up your other matchups better, which did work out because you dodged, you know, which is good. 
Yeah, but... I would say, reflecting on the event, um, the Maui's fish hooks were pretty terrible up until they weren't, and then they were the best card in my deck. Uh, and I'm talking about my um, top 16 match where yeah. I, I played into um, the Mufasa Ruby player Ender. who had 12 evasives in their deck. Yep. Uh, and I had a Rafiki take out both a mini and the evasive Pongo. And then my Maui's were like slaughtering uh, Pongos and Goofies the Goofies, rest of yeah. the game. Um, I was actually kind of nervous about that top 16 matchup. You, you, never want to, you never want to queue into Mufasa on the draw. Uh, yeah. which is what I did, uh, particularly one with all the evasives. Uh, and the night before, uh, our teammate Rob built the deck and was just playing it on ladder, and I didn't want to play any games against it. I just wanted to kind of watch. Yeah. Uh, and every Mufasa he played flipped over like a Tremaine or a Dragon, and like we were all we were all laughing and having a good time because like the deck just looked unbeatable, and I felt like I was, yeah. I was just I, I thought that was going to be a really short uh, Sunday morning. I think um, we all did, <laughs> but but then um, you know the fish the fish hooks came into play, and then uh, in the second and third game, I guess my opponent kind of realized that the evasive plan may not be the best, and um, they were inking the evasives and were going to you know they were still going to flip them off of Mufasa sometimes, right? But like the, they went back to being kind of a normal Mufasa deck, mm -hmm. um, which you can beat if you get lucky. I got really fortunate that I stole uh, the first game on the draw. Um, yeah. Uh, even even after a pretty rough Mufasa flip to flip the Chernabog on turn six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I recovered from that and was able boy. to steal that game. Um, but boy. otherwise, the fish hooks were pretty terrible. But like then they were pivotal, you know, pivotal in the best card I had in my deck. Uh, really yeah. I mean, it's one of those, right? Like you, you, plan, you plan for as much as you possibly can, right? And yeah. Yeah, the good news about fish hooks is that they're inkable. So, yeah, I, I uh, do like very kind of narrow. Um, in you know in magic they would be a sideboard card right but mm -hmm. in Lorcana they're your ink slots right you 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 can put narrow inkable cards in your deck because when they're bad you just ink them and uh, mine were pretty bad like I said most of the time uh, that's fair so you uh you know you told us that the most popular question was like how do you not have minis how do we not have spell books you actually wrote like a little document about it to share because you probably got tired of telling people the answer yeah I did. Uh, I did. <laughs> So talk to me, talk, talk me through that a little bit. Um, so mini is largely the best card you can have in the mirror match, uh, which I said I thought was going to be down in popularity on the weekend. It, it didn't turn out to be that way, but um, you know, it, it, that's what you I thought it. was going to happen. <laughs> um, and the only other matchup of like the most, you know, the six most popular decks that it's really good against is blue steel. Mm -hmm. And I found that blue steel, even with minis, was still a pretty bad matchup. And yeah. um, the new versions of blue steel in set three, and even towards the end of set two, uh, they kind of prey on the red purple decks. Um, you know, red purple is kind of like a fair mid range, fair mid range deck. Like you're not taking advantage of singing mechanics or shifting mechanics to do anything kind of unfair. You're just kind of playing to the board and uh, you know playing very good cards every turn. And blue steel just goes over the top of that, um, and particularly on the draw, blue steel feels really helpless. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not a, I'm not afraid to have bad matchups if I think they're going to be unpopular. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't play blue steel until the semifinals, and then I, you know, I kind of got what I deserved for having a deck that was, uh, you know built without blue steel in mind uh sure, <laughs> it sure. did come back to haunt me um but even that said like had i seen it in day one during the the two game format stage I, I still went one and one against it it did beat me both games that it was on the play but you know in the in the best of or the sorry the two game format i would have split with them um mm -hmm. which is like what you want to do in your bad matchups you know yeah. so um so anyway, going back to mini, uh, basically every other matchup, I didn't want mini in my deck, like particularly against the green decks. Uh, I, I just wanted to have anything else, like just something that drew a card. And yeah. usually when people are putting in mini, they're cutting Maleficent Sorceress or they're cutting uh, Cusco's or they're cutting castles or something like that to squeeze them in. And um, I think in a lot of matchups, you just want to play cards to draw cards. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, you know, so, that, so that's, I, I thought those other matchups were going to be more prevalent. I played green steel 
uh, four times on wow. Saturday and then played it another time uh, yeah. in my third, fourth match in the in the top four. Um, so team, uh, Melissa and myself, we played the exact same 60 cards and we went eight and one on the, or sorry, eight and three on the day against Green Steel. So we had good success because we were just drawing in a card slot uh, and instead of, you know, getting the number, in. I know the number was uh, particularly even better against the Ruby Sapphire deck. I think you guys had one game loss against it, right? Yeah, we, uh, the, the 60 went eight and one against yeah. uh, Blue Red across the two days and the one loss was um when i was on the draw in my top eight match uh, so i so so when i won so i was on the i was on the draw in my top 16 match but then i was on the play in my top eight match and i was able to um take the two games i was on the play um so so going back to kind of surfer mini for a second right so blue steel i felt like it didn't really help um there are some blue steel players that reached out to me after they read that and they said actually uh, you know, when somebody goes turn one, Olaf, turn two, Cusco, turn two, min or turn three, mini, turn four, castle, like we lose. Huh. Um, and maybe that's true. And maybe it's better than I'm giving it credit for in that matchup. It hasn't been my experience, like, for, you know, particularly on high, uh, high pixel born ladder. I just felt like even mini didn't really help there. And the other matchups were going to be more important. Yeah. Uh, and then in the mirror, like I said, I thought it was going to be down. Um, the, the other kind of interesting part in that little write up was like you said, the, the Ruby Sapphire players coming out and said, there's no way your red purple matchup is nearly as good as you claim it. <laughs> you, yeah. uh, you claim it to be, especially if you're not putting mini in it. Um, yeah. So George uh, sort of gave me a boot camp on the, on the blue red matchup, mm -hmm. um, taught me how to play it. Uh, my, I did struggle with it, you know, earlier in the week, he kind of talked me through it. And basically what you just want to do is um, put cards on the table uh, and quest with them but never really ink the cards that say draw a card on them. So like the yeah. Cuscos and the Maleficents uh, in particular, you just want to play them and quest with them. Um, and you never really give them an opportunity to put their dimes into play because they're forced to react to your board every single turn. Yeah. Um, and so if every single turn you're presenting a board that they have to have play Be Prepared or Lady Tremaine to deal with, they never get time to, to quest on their own. Uh, and it worked out, you know, it worked for both Melissa and for myself. Um, yeah. And so I, I was talking with a, flu, a few of those Ruby Sapphire players and kind of the conclusion we came up after the fact is if the, the good players on Ruby Sapphire are winning and the good players on uh, Ruby Amethyst are also winning in the same matchup, it probably just means, um, you know, that the, the, the good players are the ones that are winning that, you know, when, regardless of what side they're on. Because uh, mm -hmm. both of us are sitting here claiming, you know, that's, <laughs> it's a, an unlosable matchup, but uh, so the truth is probably somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, it's probably a 50 50 thing at, 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 on average. But. Yeah, I would still argue it's better for red purple. But. Yeah, I'm still in that boot camp too, but I guess, you know, it's just, it is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, so, why, you know, I the clear answer here is we didn't think that uh, the mirror is going to be prevalent, so there wasn't a reason to have the spell books, but. If you saw, um, you know, from other events this weekend, there's a lot of different decks now coming out there with double spell books for this particular matchup, you know, into you. So, yeah. you know, like, what's your feeling on that? So Ruby, Ruby Amethyst, basically, since this game came out, has been a really prominent part of the metagame. And it's kind of been, there's this hamster wheel of it trying to beat, each, beat up on itself. Yeah. Uh, right. So, like, the, the meta will stabilize, Ruby Amethyst will, will go down in popularity, um, and then you can play a normal deck and it's the best deck again. And then the Ruby Amethyst players are like, all right, well, my, my mirror percentages are going to go up. It's time to get the books out. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they do that and they beat up on the Ruby Amethyst decks. And then the week after that, the regular decks come out and beat up on Ruby Amethyst because now they have a bunch of books in their deck. And the way I kind of choose to handle that is like when the books are prevalent, I just get off the hamster wheel for a week and wait for them to kind of go away. Yeah. Uh, because for the same reason I didn't want mini in my deck, I don't really want to put a spell book in my deck either, just because it's too bad everywhere else. Yeah, uh, I mean, especially when you're talking about you know you want you, you wanted to have four of each chair lady, you know, like yeah, you, right. you got to make room. Of... You got to make room, you know. The reason to play red purple is like basically every card in the deck is a two for one. Yeah, um, you know, starting with like Cusco, uh, Maleficent, Rabbit. Um, Lady Tremaine, Scar, friends from the other side, Queen's Castle, be prepared. Um, so 
the reason the deck is so good is because every time you play a card, you're kind of getting two for it. Right. Uh, and so when I am choosing to play this deck, it's because I, I just want to win. I, I just want the game to progress to the point where my two for ones start taking over and eventually like it just buries my opponent in card advantage. Fair. And like Spellbook does definitely cheat that. And if you play Spellbooks, you do have an advantage in the mirror. Mm -hmm. um, but when the spell books come out, like that's time to go to green purple or, or something. Right, 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 right. Just beat up on them rather than try and fight back against, uh, you know, that kind of, that kind of game. And I will say I did play a spell book when I was in Philadelphia on both days. So like, I'm not opposed to it. No. Uh, yeah. When you need it. No, I hear you. But you, you, uh, you, you pretty much have never really liked Minnie Mouse though, right? I've always been off of Minnie Mouse. That's right. Well, in set two, it set two, you had to be on Minnie Mouse because it was <laughs> in the mirror. Yeah. The thing with Minnie, right, was that in set two, the answers were so bad that like Minnie could run away with it. Like people yeah. were putting Fidget in their deck in order to like counter <laughs> Minnie. Um, and, you know, and, and they were playing Fidget at a time when everybody was playing Teeth and Ambition in their deck, right? So like sometimes you just play Minnie, your opponent plays Fidget, and you just Teeth your Minnie to kill her Fidget, and you just like quest you away. Still just quest for eight. Um, <laughs> but set three really changed that dynamic. Uh, so first you get Medusa, which is a turn earlier than be prepared. That it just clearly answers mini. Second, like you have fish hooks now, which also can clearly answer a, a mini. Um, and then also like with capsules, the dynamic kind of changes. So mini became much worse on the draw right. in the mirror, because now if I develop my board and play like a Maleficent on turn three, and if your turn three is playing mini, mm -hmm. if I have a castle in my hand, I'm windmill slamming that on the table and saying, right. good luck. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not even going to win a race anymore. No. Uh, and so, and another thing that like people really like about Minnie is they say that she like kind of sings safely, um, you know, cause she has evasive. And my answer to that is like, if, if my, my Maleficent dies when I sing a friend's from the other side, like, so be it, you know? Yeah. Like it's already done everything yeah. you've ever wanted it drew to do. a card. It got you to an exert a character. Yeah. I, you know, I'd already sung like, you know, yeah. I'm, I accept, you know, I'm with you. So, totally um, with you. All right, so enough on those matchups. We have a, we have a, obviously, you know, when you're building this deck, you call it a mid range deck. You're trying to get as many two for ones. I want to like just quickly kind of go through some of your thoughts on the different matchups. We did touch on uh, the Sapphire Steel a little bit, but you know that that top four match. I mean, that was a difficult match, right? Like, oh my yeah, God. I mean, to be fair, I don't know that I ever thought I had a chance in that matchup. I, um, so Fair. you you can build Ruby Amethyst in with to have blue steel in mind. Um, you can you can put the minis in your deck. You can go higher on castles. You can even add other locations. Like you could add the RLS sure. Legacy. You could put the dragons back in so that when um, you know when you finally get to nine, you're you're playing some more powerful cards. You could put the other be prepared back in. Um, if you want to do that, you can. Uh, but the rise of both green, well, green, green steel specifically, and green purple, really punishes you for putting all those expensive cards in your deck. Um, yeah. And the green steel is the deck a lot of people like to play. It's really prominent. It's really aggressive. Uh, it wins quickly. It wins convincingly, which is another thing people love, uh, is to like feel like you blew out your opponent and you had a really easy match instead of like having to slog it out. That's right. another thing that I. I, the reason why I think a lot of people like mini is because when you win with mini, like the game yeah. is like, yeah, it's just over. You just, you just run away with it. So like, I just thought like I couldn't beat blue steel and the green matchups with the same deck. So I got to pick one and I think green's just going to be more popular. So I chose to go that way. Yeah. So quickly, cause I, I love that you, you had meant you even wrote this kind of in the, uh, the document as well, where you said like, sometimes you just got to pick, you know, like you, you got to lose to something. Right. And you, yeah. you said, you're like, I was totally comfortable losing in top four to the one deck that I sold out to. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the way it goes. And everybody knew, you know, the three of us that were playing the deck knew going into it, that blue steel was going to be rough. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's not unwinnable, especially, you know, on the play, but the other kind of the thing about blue steel is you're at the mercy of their draws. Sure. Right. Like if they have it, they, they really have it. Yeah. Uh, Whereas compared to like something with like um, Amber Steel and like all the different song variations, it's possible for both of you to have it. And because they're not ramping and because their threats, uh, they sort of top out, you know, at the five drop slot with like the Beast and Robin Hood most times, or maybe Tinkerbell. Right. Like you can combat those, you know, those, they don't have, they don't have Dime 
uh, and um, uh, Bell, you know, to gain five or 10 in a turn. Like, so you can sure. keep up with that, even though they're both whole, whole new world decks. Yeah. Uh, Fair. Yeah. So what about, uh, what about the other side of the coin here, right? So the, the aggro decks are, you know, ever rising in different variations, but how do you feel about, you know, the kind of like Ruby Amethyst in, in, in like, let's just say particularly the list that you played this weekend into the matchup that is uh, Emerald Amethyst? It's scary to be on the on the Ruby Amethyst side of this matchup. Um, they're a little more aggressive. They're a little lower to the ground, which puts the the onus on you as the red purple player to draw well. Sure. Um, right. So they, if you look at uh, if you look at their deck, they have ten one cost cards, and then they have um, you know at least the list on the table. They have another ten uh, two cost cards. Right. We don't. We're not that low to the ground because we're playing the bigger right uh red cards right? right so you can't really miss turn one or turn two against yeah so you're uh, just green purple incredibly you... aggressively mulliganing for that right. line right and and sometimes you just have to mulligan seven because like yeah. keeping keeping a cusco on the draw it, it's like your first play like he's got to put the cusco back too yeah uh, in order to yeah. try and find the one drop um or like a lot of people will keep snake and hope that they find the one drop um, and you just can't do that. No. You, just, you can't, especially if you don't find a one or a two, like on the draw, you're in really big trouble. So this yeah. is, this is the deck I would kind of least want to see, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the later rounds of the tournament, because you know, the, the green, the green purple players that have made it through, yeah. you know, the first yeah, four rounds, yeah, yeah. they know what they're doing. Uh, and they probably have to battle through the steel decks and like, they're not gonna, they're not just going to sell out and, you know, quest with everything and hope to run you out. They're going to be a little more patient. They're going to time their Ursulas a little bit better, uh, you know, and that, and that can be a challenge. Very, very fair. Uh, so how about two more? Uh, so we have the uh, the Amber Ruby deck, and I, there's like a million versions of this, if we're being honest. I could have picked any one of them. But in general, this is a deck that I think many believe preys on Ruby Amethyst. So how do you feel about that matchup? Um, I feel pretty good about it. Um, mostly because I do have Pinocchios in my deck and um, you can mulligan for them. It's, um, I actually think the two decks on the screen are kind of similar in the way they play out because they both revolve around a two card draw engine, yeah. uh, right? So Mufasa needs um, Mother Gothel and Rapunzel. And then you have the Hiram Paw Sickle combo in, uh, in the blue red deck. So Strong. they both have to put A and B together to draw a ton of cards. Right. Um, the difference is that you can actually disrupt the Mufasa side of it because your Pinocchios are live mm -hmm. against uh, Gothel, where you can't really do anything about the boss sickle sitting on the table. Um, so as long as they don't draw a ton of cards, and as long as their Mufasa flips are reasonable, you know, not hitting dragons every time, uh, <laughs> it's it's a winnable matchup on the draw. Um, and you know, I I I queued into the version that had. Uh, all the evasives and I had two hooks in my deck. So that, it was a much better matchup than like kind of a stock version. Uh, that's maybe a little bit more aggressive. So I, I think that match, I'm not going to say it's good. Uh, right. And I still think you're probably unfavored when you're on the draw, but like when you're on the play, I think it's pretty good. And like their defensive tools aren't very good. Uh, you know, so. So the, um, I think there was a, a couple key moments where you have to like kind of decide what to ignore in that matchup. Yes. And in most of the cases, you were just actively ignoring the Mufasa. You were just like, you know what? Your Mufasa is going to get your two lore as, as long as you want, like as long as you want it to. Right. So then you actually put them in the position, uh, specifically your game three, where you're like, I'm going to be the aggressor. Yes. Uh, and you were able to do that with, you know, with, you know, with this list, right. Where like this list doesn't have minis, this list doesn't have, you know, any like crazy amounts of two lore, uh, spread cards that are just daggering away the game. You're like, no, like I'm beating you with Olaf and Cusco's and you know foxes and crabs, right? Like, so when you're able to to still do that with this list, does that talk to the testament of understanding why you actually don't need Minnie Mouse? Um, maybe. Um, uh, you know, it's it's just, that's another matchup where probably I would have wanted Minnie Mouse if I sure. like could go back and like swap out three cards. <laughs> um really it's right the the purple package and the reason i choose to play it more often than not is that um you don't really have bad draws because every card in the deck represents multiple cards you draw a ton 
your 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 hands are very smooth they're very functional most of the time uh and and i gravitate gravitate towards that kind of gameplay whereas like something like with mufasa if they're if you can disrupt their rapunzels and not let them draw cards um you know that's they it's kind hard. of run out of steam right they, it's they hard, aim, but you know yeah uh, it, it it is hard um i have been got more than a few times um by kita because uh kita comes in you your opponent puts a three five into play and like you know your fox can't do anything and then you're like maybe i'll quest with it and then you're like oh wait the key my my fox gets its attack back and now this kita can crash into it and you know so like you got to be careful about it and and i kind of have to run into the wall to learn not to do that so yeah. i i play a lot on pixel board and i make a lot of mistakes but i learn from them you know and it's yeah. like, you know so like i i think it takes practice but the mufasa is a, a matchup that can be uh you know it's fine it's not a re if you if you think you're going to go to a set championship and there's going to be four mufasa players i think you can play red purple and be fine fair um, enough no, okay. uh we talked we touched on it a little bit the just the ruby sapphire match you know what is your what, what's your go-to strategy for that particular match yeah so so mulligans you want olaf you don't want rafiki because olaf quest for two into the the queen of hearts right because the, the queen of hearts doesn't trade back so you just quest with it um you want Cusco over snakes so i chuck the snakes back when i'm mulliganing i don't want to bounce anything i just want to put cards that draw yep. cards and quest into play uh, so i want to go olaf Cusco, maleficent rabbit um you know, and uh, in the mid game, um, you just same thing. You just want to put two cards into play, uh, or or you know, um, Medusa or uh, Tremaine. They're both fine. You kind of you want to save your Tremaines kind of for um, uh, the Tamatoas because that's basically your only way of removing it. Uh, and I never really want to cast be prepared. If you cast be prepared in this matchup, you're kind of losing. Yeah, unless. Um, you like legitimately have multiples and you can just right. buy time but yeah so so what you want to do is you want to curve out early and then in the mid game you sort of always want to prep a or you always want to put a board into play that your opponent doesn't feel comfortable wasting a turn to play dime on yeah um so like on you know putting uh, a maleficent and a goat into play on turn seven and then next turn playing a rabbit and another goat and then your opponent preps, but you get your cards back. And then like yeah. next turn you play Maleficent, Cusco, you know, another rabbit. And then they prep again and you get your cards back. And you just yeah. keep putting those cards into play and you never really give them a chance to go on the offensive. Yeah, and even like in in that particular in that same situation, as good as Olaf is on one, he's good on nine. You know, yeah. like, because he's just a card that's really interact with the one you want because you could Yeah. But it's even like even if like you're late in the game, you're just like, Yeah, here's like play Olaf, pick him up with Snake, play him again, play Cusco. Like that's a threatening line against them. Yeah, and the other thing in the red blue matchup is that they have they have four B prepareds in their deck usually, but they kind of don't because you there might they be might. one in the inkwell with the right, they might fishbone it right right and and kind of what George taught me is they can't be prepared every single turn and they the turns if they if they're if you have three things in play and they take one turn off to play a dragon right you're still questing with the other two and you can yeah. keep putting stuff out uh, it can. That's when you want the Tremaines to step up and start wiping stuff out because you really don't ever want them to sing "Be Prepared." That's kind of bad news too. Yeah, um, that's that's like then they can put their tomatoes in play. Um, but I generally think player draw right if you if your hands are functional uh, and you know you mulligan correctly, I think that this is a pretty good matchup. And and one so I I thought red blue was going to be really popular over the weekend. That's why I chose to play this deck, and then it won. So I yep. think it's going to be even more popular going forward. So I think it's a great set championships deck uh, if you're worried about blue red. Fair enough. All right. So uh, on the channel, we play a little bit of a game called Repeat After Me. So I'm going to say a statement, and then you're going to repeat the statement, but then also give the answer. Sure. Cool. All right. I started playing Disney Lorcana because... I started playing Disney Lorcana because it came into my life at the exact perfect time. Uh, so I had stepped away from card games for a long time uh, because I I have a I have a two year old now, um, so like for the last few years I wasn't playing basically anything other than uh, computer games, and then it got to the point where you know he's he's old enough now that he's a little more independent. And my you know one parent, you know won't pull their hair out if they are stuck with him for four hours, <laughs> so sure. I can go away on the weekends and you know and go to my locals and and sit down and play. 
Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. It just happened to be available. And the other thing is like, I just happened to luck in and go, go to my card store on, uh, on opening, you know, the opening Friday and they had starter decks. I didn't get any boosters, but they had starter decks. Um, so I was able to like sit down and play and then kind of fell in love with the game and, you know, go from there. Uh, but just, just happenstance really. Fair enough. I'm not a Disney dad. If that's the question. (laughs) question. No, no, it's not. Uh, it, you know, because I, (sighs) You know, we all come from different backgrounds, right? Like, yeah, you know, no, it's funny. Uh, George will say like Angelina Jolie, right, you know, <laughs> referring to Maleficent. I'm like, I have no idea what this guy's talking about. What's he talking about? <laughs> what is he talking about? So true. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is still Cantaloupe. I just, I can't, I can't get past that one. It's too good. <laughs> um. All right. So speaking of uh, set releases, uh, one. One thing I'd like to see in an upcoming Disney Lurkana set is? Uh, I would like the Pixar stuff to show up. I don't know if that's possible or even if it's been done yet, but like I'm a huge Wally fan. Oh, okay. I would play Wally if he was available. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I don't think contractually they are the same thing, right? They're not. So they are different branches, but they're both underneath Disney. So one day it's definitely possible. We could yeah, get maybe. Wally that's action. True. Little Eva, you know, Wally Eva, you know, it's fine. Yeah, I'm cool. with you. I'm with you. Um, so you've played other card games, right? Yes. Magic right. for a long time. Okay. Uh, and then I switched over to like to some online stuff. Uh, like okay. Cartoon, and I played Gwen for a while. So this is a one, this is one that I've been, uh, I've been kind of thinking about a bunch lately, right? Cause we're going into set four, which isn't a lot of cards, but you know, 204 cards a set's not nothing. Uh, so one of the questions I'd like to ask you is a keyword from another game that I would like to see in Disney Lorcana is flashback from magic. Ooh. Okay. So, uh, for flashback, give me a, give me a yeah. snap master mage. Oh no, God, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I don't know how much it needs to cost. Maybe like five or six, but that'd be cool. Oh, well, I mean, I would, I would like to, I don't know how it would work, but I would like to be able to sing the friends that's oh. in the graveyard. Oh, yeah. Let me just, yeah. <laughs> All right. So for everyone that's not up to speed, flashback is a an ability that says while a card is in the discard pile, you can basically pay its cost again to play it again. Yes. But the problem with flashback is that in this game, it would have to go to the bottom of your deck because there's no remove from game zone. So... It's, yeah, it's I mean, adaptable. It's today. Yeah, it's adaptable, but um, and then Snapcaster Mage is absolutely busted. Where it's just like you get to play this card that lets you play a card from your discard pile, and that's just all nonsense. But yeah, I, I can get behind Flashback. That's a cool one. Uh, so you kind of said it, but let's let's really break it down. Ruby Amethyst is a good choice for set champs because Ruby Amethyst is a great choice for set champs because it has game against everything. Uh, I think it's even better in set champs because I think the average, I think the the bad matchup against blue steel is at the upper echelon of play, and I think the average blue steel player, you're probably all right against. Uh, so it's one, it's worst matchup is probably not so bad at store championships, uh, and against everything else, I think you're pretty close to fifty fifty, uh, which gives you the opportunity to play every game. You don't feel bad when your opponent inks something. And plays a different, you know, when your opponent reveals their two colors, you're not like, oh no, you know, this is how do I ever beat that? Right? No. That's why that's why I like Ruby Amethyst. You just, you always have a chance. Yeah, I, it's funny. Like you know, we've had this conversation a bunch. Um, I'd say over the last couple of weeks, it feels like every week we find a way to have the same conversation, but it it's always different because of past data to like kind of gravitate towards. But some for some reason, right? You, Melissa, George, uh, to another extent, myself, Rob, like Ruby Amethyst is just clearly that comfort zone. It, it's, that, you know, like it, it, it's just, it is that comfort zone. You, you really, you genuinely feel like I can win any game. Yep. And that, that, that's a hard thing to let go. You know, like, do I think that there are better decks than it? Yeah, I do. I really do. But I can't say that I can win every game with, every deck whereas yeah. i do feel like going into a set with ruby amethyst it's like i have a chance you know well like the like I, the hyper aggro decks are like the easiest example is like your opponent inks a, a steel card and you're just you know 
you pack them up and, and go get lunch, right? Like it's over. You're like it's, your entire your entire like fatigue is yeah. just like. And, and so like I I I I really don't like feeling helpless when I'm playing. Yeah. I, I just want the opportunity to play and have a good game, uh, and that's why I like Ruby Amethyst. I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. All right, second game we like to play on the channel is uh, Would You Rather. So I'm gonna put two things on the screen, and you're gonna tell me which one you want and why. Okay. Cool. All right. So first one, choose one. Best of three or the two game format and why? Uh, I'm gonna go with the two game format because of the pace of play. I, I it's got I have my issues with the two game format. Um, best of threes obviously has its advantages because most matches end up with a defined winner. Yeah. But like when I'm at an SCG or at a challenge in the future, I, I just, I hate the downtime in between rounds. So mm. like, just let's. Even let's the length the of tournament, right? You know, like you said earlier, uh, nine rounds, eight hours. Yeah. That's just, no, it, was, uh, that was, it was incredible. Uh, that's was, never going to happen in a best of three with nine rounds. Like you're yeah. talking nine rounds, like maybe 10 and a half hours, you know, like yeah. maybe not 10 and a half, but like it could be, you know, um, I, I I think that that is definitely if we put out a pros and cons list for the two game format, a, an absolute pro is for like for this weekend was forty minute rounds. If I'm pretty confident that Robinsberger has not put out an official time limit yet, I'll put it this way: I would not have played in the ten k if it was best of three last Saturday, because that would have been up until midnight, and like I'm not I can't, I can't do that. Yeah, I think it would have been closer. Um, Probably closer to like ten o'clock, I yeah. would say like ten ten thirty easily. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so. I and you add in like judge calls and people go into time and round like in, in, yeah, there was, there was one round that was like like a twenty minute extension, right? You know, so yep. on a forty minute timer, you're like, yeah, whatever, it's just an hour. Yeah. But on an hour timer, you know, you're like, oh, it's an hour and a half almost. You know, when it's all said and done. So yep. yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, just to to quickly you know, to push on it a little bit. Where are we with the bonus point function? How do you feel about that? The the math people on the team say the bonus point's a bad idea. And uh, I, the thing I don't like about the bonus point is uh, the helpless feeling you get if you lose your first match. Mm -hmm. uh, so like at least with two out of three, if you lose the first, sorry, first game, if you first lose game. the first game, you, you get to fight another day and you get to claw it back. In the best of two, that you you right your your second game, you feel like you have so much on the line because if you get O two, it's like such a you know it feels so bad, and you have no opportunity to get that bonus point back. No, yeah, right. Game. Like particularly, it's particularly bad if you are on the draw in the first game. Uh, sorry, on the play. If you lose on the yeah. play in the first game, and now you're on the draw and you need to call back that point, like it just, it's really it. it it's anxiety inducing. It doesn't feel good. Um, so like make every game worth one point. It seems reasonable to me. I can get behind that. All right. So this one, this next one's a little bit fun for me. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you rather play Kurt <laughs> playing Amber Steele or Rob playing Ruby Amethyst? Would I, which one would I rather play against? Yeah. Yeah. I would rather play against Kurt because his deck has Bayou in it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think both are equally good players. Um, I, I just think Kurt, Kurt has a propensity to play much worse decks. Uh, that's bro. That's actually very fair. <laughs> well, I take it back. His his decks are good. He just has he just adds a few spicy cards in there that probably you get the uh, the spicy meter on ink decks. You know, yeah. to stick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I had to have a little fun with one. All right, uh, last one, and I think it's funny because you've already mentioned one of these, but choose one of these cards to play. Grandma Tala or Kita, why? I'm playing Kita every time here. I actually, unironically, might sleeve. If I were to sleeve up a different deck, it would mm -hmm. be a Kita deck this weekend for set championships. So this is a card that's not really seeing much play at all. So what, like, yeah, what would drive so you to that? Some, uh, what, one, somebody who I've become... Um, you know, chatty with and good friends with in the lore 20 pro is also a Kita fan uh he was originally a tiana fan his name is boomy uh oh. his handle is twitter you know, it's uh sorry his um discord handle is is uh boomy 
Jr. And he plays Amber Steel Tiana decks that are really good. Mm. Um, and I've got my, I always keep my eye on it and I often lose to it because he's also a high ladder player. Uh, and it's certainly something that nobody would expect. And having, having that kind of spice in your deck is something that like really, if you, if you ink, uh, you know, a, a sad beast and play Akita on turn one, your opponent's got no idea what's going on. And like, I like that. That's probably fair. Yeah. It is Not, nothing there, against Grandma Tala, but there, there's some layer to saying that just by having a different type of card in your deck, it forces your opponent to make different decisions. Yeah. Um. So like a card like that, especially because this we're talking about, you know, both of these cards are cards that we just don't see very often. Um. If like honestly, if at all, I can't remember the last time I saw Akita in like a top deck list since I don't I I don't know. It's been a while. So I think you just got to be patient. I think it's going to show up. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. I think it's, 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 it's a very good card, right? We, we we can agree to that. The card's very good. So it's, so why people? What's really scared people off is it's bad against rush cards and like two of the best cards in the game right now are maui and the fox sure um but <laughs> sure. It, it's been figured out uh, yeah i don't want to give, don't want to give away secrets that yeah are that's like, super spoilers man <laughs> uh, but be on the look if you're i feel bad for the people who are getting keyed this weekend i'll say that <laughs> very very fair so let's talk a little bit about you, sir. Who is uh, Dave Selberg, the attack for two? Um, you know. Uh, so the attack, attack for two name. So I, I'm, I'm just a, a, you know, a father from Maryland these days. Uh, mostly. Yeah, you're a Baltimore Ravens fan, so that's cool. Yeah, happy, uh, you know, happily married with with one little one, one two year old, and another on the way. Uh, the attack for two is a long time magic name, uh, so okay. I like the beat down deck stack you know back give me a one drop that attacks for two is like oh okay all i all i ever wanted all i ever wanted to do back then uh, so it's a vinyl yeah. lions kind of guy yeah so the um the switch over to uh lord kind of had me maybe change it to quest for two uh but then i'm playing ruby amethyst for none of the cards in the deck quest for two yeah, not currently yeah before it had it <laughs> yeah you know i should put the minis back in and then it would make sense again. <laughs> it'll all be fine again <laughs> yeah that's fun um, yeah, but uh, fortunate, you know, to have, I, I'd wager one of the best local Lorcana scenes that you can have. The Baltimore area, it's got Rob, it's got Drew, it's got Kurt, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people from the Northern Virginia area that also travel up to events in this area are really, really good. Uh, and so, like, our store championships are really competitive, even just, like, the locals are really competitive. Like, I, if you, if you want to win those six booster packs, you got to go through, you got to go through Rob, you know? And, yeah. <laughs> It makes you play really well. Uh, yeah, that I can agree on. I'm sure there's people every week that are like, God damn it, Rob showed up again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's good, sure. though. I mean, like, but, you know, if we talk about that, like getting from step A to step B, it, from my personal experience, one of the best ways to get better at this game is playing pl players that are better than you. Um, Absolutely. I think so often players stick themselves in a room with players that are not better than them. And that's why they're just like, they, like, they just, they hit that, that mark and they're just like, yeah, Oh, I, how do I get better? You know, that's absolutely oh. true. Uh, and, and the pixel born is, is absolutely incredible for that because like the, you, you know, you queue into people at your skill level and as you progress, you queue into better, you know, you play into better, better people. Yeah. Um, other, uh, you know, other, the other thing that I'll add is that like both Kurt and Rob are uh, very, interesting deck builders and willing to play off the wall stuff so another issue that a lot of people that can get themselves into is like they just want to hear their own opinion recited back to them so that they feel right sure. and rob and kurt will never do that and right. they'll beat you with their ideas and change they'll, they'll force you to change your opinion uh i learned that the hard way in the top four of the scg when, when rob beat the crap out of me without castles in his deck uh Fair. after telling me i should cut the castles so <laughs> um when i had them and he didn't right so you know yeah yeah now, I, mean, I, now I listen to my teammates so uh, <laughs> that's funny so that's why i didn't play to be prepared last weekend was because my teammates told me not to yeah um i don't know but it, it, i kind of keep saying this but it just just so someone else can hear from someone else from the team how often does the ruby amethyst deck change 
hourly? <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> so, so it for me, for me, it changes. You know, if I if I were playing in events every Saturday, I'd by Thursday I'd probably have my changes locked in. So yeah. I'm so when I lock it in for an event, I don't play it anymore because you if you if you fire up a game of Pixelborn with like a and you lose, now you're like. <laughs> Uh, what am I, what mistakes am I making? You know, do I, so the worst thing you can do in like a TCG is change either your deck or the cards either at 2 a.m. before or the day of. Don't do that, you know. I'm all for it. I'm totally. Just leave it up on Thursday or Friday, put it in the box, bring it with you and lock it in and, and be done with it. Because if you start making last minute untested changes, it's not, it's not, I'm not the type of player that can do that and, and, benefit from it i need to uh i need to get my reps in there, there's definitely something about going with what you know you yes. know and I, I think that that's uh that would be like the go home takeaway from that statement so yeah i like it i like it set champs this weekend sir are you excited yeah uh for sure i've got one uh at the local store five minutes from my house on saturday uh i've got a few options for sunday uh hopefully i just do well on saturday and maybe i'll take sunday off um, but I definitely am registered for events on both Saturdays. I also have the option on both Sundays. Um, don't know if I'll make those Sunday ones. Uh, but definitely very excited. Um, Even just in general, like organized play official from Robin. Yeah. Uh, the kickoff, so, right? Unfortunately, uh, so the set champs are going to be great. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for the challenges, I'm not going to really get to take part in any of them just because, you know, the timing with life just didn't work out. Yeah. Um, you know, but when when they do you know, become available maybe towards the end of the year or next year. And, you know, it works out for me to play in them. I'm super excited to take part. Uh, I loved the Grand Prix circuit for Magic in like the early 2010s. Like sure. that was what I did on the weekends was like I traveled to Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, even now, if I, Sometimes I didn't even play in them. I just showed up and like played inside events and hung out with people. And, I loved, you know, I absolutely loved it. But the, the difference of 10 years is now you have a two-year-old and a wife, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so I definitely won't be doing it every weekend, right? But like if one shows up in yeah. you know, the D.C. to Philadelphia area. Yeah, it would be nice. It's, we didn't get any love uh, in the originals, right? The Northeast kind of got shafted a little bit. So, you know, I, let's hope, we can hope for something. I'm all in on uh, the Toronto one. So, uh, there's, so my wife's family is coming into town for that one. So there is the possibility for me to get away for like two days. There you go. Uh, and it syncs up with the Toronto one. So like whenever the tickets become available for that, I'm going to be sitting in front of my computer, like mashing the refresh button. Hoping I, yeah. I, I That'll be one. all of us on Friday morning. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, sir, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, congratulations again on your incredible finish. Third place um, in a 10K tournament. Uh, I think the take-home was $1,300, right? Yeah. I mean, and the payments are, like, really fast. I already and, got it. That's uh, good. Yeah, I mean, that that, that kind of checks out. So that's good to yeah, hear. No, we, didn't awesome. have to wait. we didn't have to wait five weeks like we did yeah, for SPG. Not the SPG right? where, you're, <laughs> where, it, where it looks like junk mail showing up in your mailbox. <laughs> Very, very fair, sir. Well, thank you so much for joining me this evening. A ton yeah, of thank fun. you for having me. And uh, that'll be all for us today, guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Talk to you later.